today, we seem to be focusing on the flesh, on the things that seem to hinder us and trip us up, make us stumble, make us not as happy as we could be, not as joyful as we should be, not even as content as we ought to be. <laughs> well, one thing it does do, it humbles us. So, anytime that you think that I, for one, am self-righteous, the holy man here, oh, be it far from me to say that I am not without sin, for surely I am the chiefest of sinners, and I sin, I say, more than any other man. But God is faithful who has not suffered me any time to be tempted above that I was able, but was always there to give me a way of escape even when I chose not to exercise it. When you don't, then you know what it's about when you need to confess your sin, to turn from it, to reach out to God and ask Him for His mercy. For we aren't forgiven because He owes us. We're forgiven because He loves us. Starting your day in love, confess whenever you sin in the day. Follow peace. Now the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, is death. Death that compromises or comprises all the miseries and arisings from sin, both here and hereafter. And the mind of the Holy Spirit is life and soul peace, both now and forever. People hesitate to follow their desires because they don't know how to divide their soul from their spirit. If they can't discern the difference between the desires of their flesh and spirit-led desires, then they don't know when God is truly leading them to do something. But you can learn how to know if God is leading you or not. When God gives you a desire for something, He will give you peace along with it. You may not be excited, but you will have peace. If the thing you desire is from God, wait for peace today. Sometimes people, I think, go by feelings either way. They say, well, I have peace about it, so, you know, I went ahead and did it. And then they look back and they go, well, you know, the peace wasn't quite what I thought it was because I was interpreting whether I felt at peace or whether I just didn't feel anything at all. How about you get a word on it? How about you just, you know, if you can't figure out about the peace part or the hearing God speaking or anything else, how about you just flip up in the Bible and say, God, give me a word. If it fits, I'll do it. If it don't, don't. It's worked for me in times of crisis. I guess it could work for you. Maybe I'm the only nut here. <laughs> Maybe I'm the only emotional one who has that emotional devotion to God that I want to know, Lord. So I come at him and say, God, I'm sorry I blew it. Or God, give me an answer. I need it. Or God, hello, I don't hear you lately. I think something's wrong. So emotions especially in devotions, the point isn't to learn as much as it is to be inspired by pointing yourself in the right direction to get a word from God. That's it simple. I go to devotions expecting God to speak to me. I don't go to a devotional to get teaching. I'm sorry. I may be taught of the Lord in it, but that's a practical application of experience with the foundation laid of the Word of God trying to bring about the accomplishment of it in me as a son of God so that I might become more like unto God himself but also that I might become more fit for the master's hand to accomplish the purpose that he designed me to do in the kingdom of God and that's teaching <laughs> but devotion nah devotion is just pointing you in the right direction and saying that away that away that away or that away when you really want to point fingers because the reality is God in devotion is just trying to meet with you today the emotion is from you <laughs>